today the weather is very nice and it has been like this for at least a week um, I've been waiting for rain uh, to do this video but it doesn't seem it's going to be much rain in the near future so um, I'll do it anyway so uh, I had to improvise a little bit but that's okay uh, it will be <laughs> at least as wet as it will be uh, during uh, heavy rain so I think we'll uh, manage anyway when you're gonna make fire in bad weather conditions that's the time when it's most important to have a fire and at the same time it's the time when it's most hard to make a fire so that's why it's important to practice this if you have some kind of shelter, a tent, a tarp, or something like that, very good. It will help you a lot. If you don't have, you need uh, some kind of natural shelter. It can be a cliff, overhanging cliff. That's very good. And usually you find that in places where it can be a little bit windy. Up in the mountains, on a hillside, or something like that. Or, and in my case, I find myself under some big trees with heavy canopy, like these big spruce trees around me. And right over my head now, there is, well, I'm not able to see the sky at all. So I would be almost bone dry under this, uh, under this canopy. So this is the place where I will prepare my my tinder, my firewood, everything. I will bring it here and prepare it. And in these conditions, preparations are extremely important. So let's go find some tinder. Nice firewood. And some good tinder. Let's bring these back to the safe place. Birch bark and a dead standing tree. Uh, I soaked it under water for yeah, 25 minutes maybe and that will easily simulate a uh, heavy downpour for a longer period of time. So let's try to make fire with these two. Okay, so let's start with the birch bark, which I believe is the easiest one. I take the birch bark. You can try to shake off a lot the most of the water when you're back under your canopy or tarp or whatever. And I'll scrape off the wet outer layer like this. You don't, you don't need that. Like so. Once that's done, I start scraping either with my knife or another a sharp rock. This is the scraper of fire steel. Anything works. And to make more fibery type of uh, tinder, you scrape the length of, uh, uh, of the birch bark. If you scrape uh, the other way, you will have more dust. Sometimes that's what you want. And this time I want to have some standing up fibers 
I will catch fire very easy. Let me see this. Scrape just with my corner. And the other way. And it doesn't matter if you scrape a hole in the birch bark. This is an old piece of birch bark I found on a dead fallen down birch. But that should work as good as from a living tree. You can see I start to get some fibrish thin strips. Like so. And this should catch fire now just with my fire steel. Like so. It's a little bit too wet, maybe. As you see, I have a flame which I can use to make uh, a bigger fire. If you're in an area without any birch bark, Try to find, uh, most preferably, a dead standing tree. But if you find something on the ground, you can feel if it's... It will be wet on the outside, of course, but you can feel if it's dense or uh, if it's soaked. With some experience, you, you, you'll manage that very well. Okay, so for this, I use my knife. This top end as if it was standing. This will be thinner and thinner and thinner and this top end will normally be soaked uh, through. So cut that off. Now I'll just uh, use a middle piece of it. I remove the outer layer which are exposed for the weather. Don't throw it away. This will, when you get your fry going, this will dry dry out and then you will have uh, stinging nettles and then you'll have some dry stuff for later see this crack this contains water try to avoid that so I'm removing even more out and away from that crack. And of course, when you're doing this, it's very important that you are under your uh, kind of shelter or your roof, so it won't come any more rain on it. It's already pretty wet and you don't want to get it more wet. Now I can use my knife or a rock just scrape off very tiny fluffy feathers doesn't need to be nice feathers but as small as and tiny as you can get it or you can scrape it there and this can be a little bit time consuming so if you're already very wet and cold it can be a little bit hard, but it's rewarding and you'll get your get the heat back in you when doing it. Try to avoid the wet areas and just scrape the dry ones. You can see I'm getting into the into the meat of the uh, tree. You can see the rings, so I'm getting deeper and deeper and it's getting dry, drier and drier. Use one piece of the wet birch bark and put this 
small scraping sound. Uh, I need to scrape some more. Okay, so let's try uh, getting this going. These shavings from the dead standing tree. I'll lower you down a little bit. Oh, almost. There he goes. Hmm. Yeah, he comes. And remember, this was lying in the in the creek for half hour. It's not going good enough. So you see, it's possible to do this, even in heavy, heavy rain. So now it's just feeding it and you'll have a big fire in no time. So there's just a few a few things to remember. You, first of all, you need to find yourself some kind of cover for yourself and your fire. Then you already established uh, a better situation for yourself. And then you can go and find some tinder and some firewood. And this this one, even standing in the rain, by splitting this, this will dry very fast. You can remove the outer layer and throw it right in the fire and it will burn very well. And the thing you find that you feel is a bit too moist, lay them around your fire and they will dry up very very quickly. That way you can all the time dry up new firewood and lay it aside for later use. So I really hope this uh, short video was uh, interesting and gave you some information you can use in your own training because it's um, the best way of getting your knowledge is to do it yourself. It's very good watching others, others doing it on videos on YouTube and other places, but watch them to learn and then go out and do it yourself. That's the only good practice. So, thank you for watching and I'll see you back very soon. I had a <laughs> oh, I had a little accident last weekend on a off-road tour. Um, I went down with my bike and I broke a rib and some other small damages. So I'm a little bit reduced, but I'll live. Uh, in a few weeks, I'll be as good as new.